Now let's talk about the granddaddy of all problems you might encounter when you're flying on an instrument flight plan. Let's assume you're flying along in an instrument flight plan and you lose communications capability. Well, what will you do? And the answer is if you're in VFR conditions, you continue the flight under VFR and try not to fly into a cloud, stay VFR as possible, and land as soon as is practicable. That's one of the FA's favorite words, practicable. It means as soon as you're really able to without bending your airplane. Now let's assume instead that you're in IFR conditions and you have a two-way communications uh, fa radio failure. First of all, is that an emergency? No, that's not an emergency. You have a perfectly good airplane and a perfectly good pilot. But here is what you're expected to do. First of all, set your transponder to 7600 because that's the loss communication squawk code. It tells them that you have a problem and it tells them what the problem is. And after that, you continue flying on your assigned route. Just keep going where you're going to go. And as far as altitudes are concerned, uh, you'll remember you fly this MEA acronym. It'll help you out with it. So the MEA altitude says you fly the minimum published altitude or fly the expected altitude. Now when you get your clearance from clearance delivery, they'll give you an assigned altitude, which is basically for the terminal area. But if there's higher terrain around, they'll also say something like expect 10,000 feet in one zero minutes. And that would be your expected altitude. So you fly your expected altitude, the minimum published altitude, the expected altitude, or the assigned altitude. And that's MEA and that's how you remember that. Now let's assume you're holding an IFR fix for an approach and you lose communications. Well, when would you begin your approach? Well, you'd begin your approach at the expected further clearance time. For instance, let's suppose you enter a holding fix, a uh, holding pattern at a fix, and you receive an expected further clearance time of, we'll say, 15 30, and they give you a two-way communications failure, or you have a two-way communications failure at 1520. That's when you have your comm failure. So what procedure should you follow to execute an approach to landing? Well, the answer is you should depart the holding fix at the expected further clearance time. Now let's take a look at this chart here, and here's Lake Charles Vortec on this chart. Now let's say you're holding at the 15 DME fix southwest of Lake Charles, I'd be here at Hyder, and let's say that's an initial approach fix. Now let's say ATC has also told you to expect an ILS approach to runway 15 and expect clearance for that approach at 1015 Zulu time. And that's your expect for the clearance time. So let's assume at 1000 Zulu, you lose communications. Now, what procedure should you follow? Well, first of all, you'd squawk 7600 to indicate lost communications. And when would you begin your approach? Well, again, you'd begin your approach at the expect further clearance time of 1015 Zulu. So now you know how to be prepared for a communications failure at any time and what to do when it happens.